Hi, this is Jamie Davis, the pod medic, and I wanted to welcome you to this public viewing of Conversion Math, part of an 11 part online or DVD tutorial available from MedicCast Productions. Check it out at medmathsimplified.com. So let's look at some of the actual mathematic conversions between some of these values. This is the first time you've seen this formula layout, and we're going to revisit it in the later segment on actually doing the formulas, but this is a basic version of it here, and it's going to not change a whole lot, so this is a good introduction. You're going to start with the value you want on the left side of the equal sign, and then on the right side, you're going to start off with the value you have times the conversion that you are creating. So this is the basic way we're going to do conversion math. And this is also the general formula we're going to use for all of our equations in this MedMath Simplified series. So let's start with a basic conversion that a lot of you run all of the time. You have a patient who weighs 220 pounds. What is his weight in kilograms? All right, yeah, I know. We all can do this one in our heads. Every adult male that we ever run into is 100 kilos exactly, and adult females are 50 or 75 kilos. Well, come on, seriously, folks. We need to get in the habit of setting up these problems correctly from the start, and there's no time like the present. We should be starting even with the easier ones. So let's look at that question again and think back to what we just saw as our formula. You have a patient who weighs 220 pounds. What is his weight in kilograms? Well, what do we know? We need to find out the weight in kilograms. So first thing we do is, what are we looking for? Put that on the left-hand side. So we're going to have kilograms equals, what do we know? Well, the next thing we put in there on the right-hand side is the items that we know. We know this patient, what? Weighs 220 pounds. So we go ahead and plug that number in as well. Now we just need to add in our conversion. Now we know that a patient who is converting from pounds to kilogram, we're going to use 2.2 pounds per kilogram. But because of the way we want to resolve this math, I'm going to turn it over. And remember, we can also flip these over on top of themselves and say instead of 2.2 pounds per kilogram, we can say one kilogram per 2.2 pounds. So I've set it up this way, and you'll see why in just a second. So let's convert this one. First, cancel out the pieces of the equation that you can. Get rid of the pounds. So you can do that when one's on top and one's on the bottom. You can convert these values out. And that will leave you with the values that you were looking for if you set the equation up correctly. It's one of the ways you can check to make sure the formula is set up right. Now, wait a minute. We're going to get ready to do the math here, but you're going to say to me again, Jamie, I already know this one. I can do it in my head. And you're right. But this is about setting up the equation right all the time, every time, so that you can run it the same way each and every time you need to do it. So let's go ahead and run the math. And you find out we knew the answer to that. Pretty simple, 100 kilograms. Let's see what happens when we have a more difficult situation. So we have another problem here, a conversion math problem. And we have a bag of saline. And it's labeled as having one liter of normal saline solution. Well, what does that mean? How many milliliters do you have? Now, again, this is a simple conversion problem. But if you are having issues remembering your conversions and values, this is a good time to go back and review. So we're going to set up that equation again. Again, you have your problem up there. What do we need to know? What is the answer we're looking for? And that is milliliters. So we're going to put that on the left-hand side. Milliliters equals. We know that we have one liter of solution. So one liter will come there after the equal sign on the right-hand side. And we now need to think of the equation we're going to use. One liter is equal to 1,000 milliliters. And we have to remember which value are we going to put on top here. 
Well, think about it. We need to be opposite the leaders. So we want leaders on the bottom and we want milliliters to end up on top because that's what we have on the left. So we're gonna go ahead and put the milliliters on top, 1000 milliliters per one liter. Go ahead and cancel things out as we're supposed to. We can cancel out all of that and we don't even have to do any math here. We've canceled out the things we can get rid of and we end up with 1000 milliliters in that bag of normal saline. Now again, these are pretty simple and easy things to follow, but it's important to understand the conversions and understand setting up the equation each and every time the same way. Let's review some key points before we move on. First off, you need to understand the underlying relationships of the metric system. You need to know the different factors of 10 for each of the various prefixes and how they modify base values. Do they make it bigger or smaller? You need to have a handle on the fact that, hey, non-standard conversions exist. Some of them you may have to memorize and know depending on your local guidelines and facility practices, but they are hopefully being phased out. Set up your conversion formulas carefully. Do it the way we showed you here. There are practice resources associated with this video series, so use them. There are sample problems there. Give yourself the opportunity to practice this stuff. This is no different than learning to do an assessment. You need to practice the steps over and over again until you're comfortable doing it. And then finally, once you've set up the formula, it's really just a question of doing the math. If you have a calculator and can use one, go ahead and do it. If you're in a testing situation where they don't let you have a calculator, then you're gonna have to do the math the long version. Now, I do have to say that there are no tricks involved with doing the math. And if you think you need additional resources or refresher information about basic math or algebra, then I suggest you talk to your school or educational facility about getting some additional resources to bone up on your basic math skills. We're not gonna cover that information here. We're gonna assume that you understand basic algebra and that you can perform basic arithmetic. These are some of the references that were used in assembling this segment and this video series. And I wanna remind you that I'm Jamie Davis, the pod medic, this has been a MedicCast podcast, Extra Production.